Welcome to the NBA Coast to Coast podcast brought to you by thelines.com. Coming to you from the West Coast, Josh Lander, joined by my guy Nate Weitzer on the East Coast. And we are looking at a four-game slate here on Thursday, Nate, uh, taking a look at a pretty fun matchup, in my opinion. The Rockets are playing host to the Miami Heat here, the surging Houston Rockets uh, on this little four-game slate. So make sure to like and subscribe to that page. Continue to follow along. We are bringing you a couple other videos, including our player props as well. Uh, We also want you to head to thelines.com. That's where we have our great written content for you guys all season long and our odds finder tool. Use that to make sure that you are shopping the lines that you can uh, across these U.S. sports books this season. Nate, let's go ahead and jump into this four-game slate and then talk Rockets and Heat. Yeah, and we break down the other game. Um, uh, the other game video here is the first game on the slate. Bucks are plus two at Memphis. The total's at 226. Hoping for some points there. Hoping for an, a, a nice up-and-down game from those exciting teams. And then we get Pelicans in a rematch at Utah. That's pretty much a pick despite Utah winning by 20 last time. Total at 232. The Suns on the struggling um, on a struggling train, plus one and a half at the Clippers, who are on a back-to-back there. Total of 218. Clippers playing elite defense with Kawhi and PG both back, but don't know if they're going to play. And then Miami's minus four at Houston. Total's 219 here, and we don't know if Jimmy Butler's going to play. It's, um, it's just being listed as injury management. He sat the front end of a back-to-back. Uh, Victor Oladipo has pl- played five straight games. Maybe he sits the back end and they do get Jimmy back in there, which, you know, Oladipo has been playing well. Um, he played 50 minutes and was a plus 26 in his last two, both heat wins. Um, and I'm kind of looking at them turning a corner. I mean, I, I don't trust Houston to win while they've surprised some good teams for sure. Uh, whether you think Phoenix is a good team right now or not. They also lost to the Spurs. I mean, so did the Heat. Uh, but, the, I mean, Houston is just – they're they're not a good team. They're frisky. And for Miami to to lose this one, I mean, when they can climb back to 500, uh, certainly don't expect that if they have Jimmy Butler back out there. Since they lost to the Spurs – uh, their defense has has been below 100 points allowed per possession, 100 possessions. They shut down Indy at a ridiculous degree, held them to 28 pain points, 35 percent field goal shooting. Did allow 60 pain points to OKC, uh, but shut them down from the perimeter, uh, held Indy to nine for 34 from three as well. Oh. Um <clears throat> And, and I mean, yeah, it, it's it's a Rockets team that's highly dependent on free throws. Miami is number one on the season limiting free throws. I, I don't trust their offense either, though, Miami. Um, I mean, they're 29th in offensive efficiency in these last three games. Obviously, the last two going under. They have the fourth worst three-point percentage um, as, and, and the Rockets even worse than that. And the Rockets are actually second in free throws allowed on the other end. So I think under is where I go first and foremost. You mentioned that Houston is four and two against the spread with the rest advantage this year. They're also four and two to the under uh, when they're able to, you know, use that youthful exuberance to fly around the court and help and help make it difficult on the opposite team. They've also gone under in four straight regulation games. The exceptions recently, a double overtime game against Philly. Um, and an over against the Suns when they got like 50 free throw attempts or something ridiculous. And Miami is not giving you that. There's not going to be anything easy here. Uh, they're also four and two to the under in their last six against Miami. And Miami's covered in five of those six. So certainly if you bet this now, um, that being the heat on the spread, uh, you're going to feel great if it turns out Jimmy Butler's playing. But I think they they have enough to limit this team either way. I mean, Houston's offense is not good. I mean, despite their like little pop up here, I mean, the last win can be credited in some way to them rallying around Steven Silas, whose dad died this week. Um, and that's an emotional lift for, for a short term there. But uh, I don't know if it carries over on a nightly basis when it's just such a rebuilding team that doesn't really have the, the weaponry to threaten a great defense. 
Yeah. I mean, first of all, there's no transitive property in the NBA. It just doesn't work that way. <laughs> if the Rockets beat this team and another team beats another team, it doesn't mean the Rockets beat that team uh, for sure. The, 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 there's a little bit of craziness happening in the NBA because the, some of the losses and wins or some of the wins that we've seen from teams like Houston and San Antonio are coming against teams in the top of the, the conference that are actually playing all their players. Um, so Jimmy playing is helpful for the Heat. I, I don't I, I don't know how I, I feel about picking a, a winner at plus four in this one just because, I don't know, I mean, the, the Heat just beat the Thunder by two. I know the Thunder are good. That was last night, but uh, the Thunder are pretty good. But, I mean, over the last six games for Houston, I, I do believe in what they're doing a little bit more when you, you look at the competition that they're playing as well, right? Like I, you said it, you beat the Suns twice. Um, you lose to Golden State. Uh, no, nothing, nothing to be uh, ashamed of there is, is Golden State at home is still a good team. Um, and then Milwaukee and Philly both had their players, right? Like everybody played in those games. So um, I'm not quite as worried. I, I do want to just start with the under. Like if I was going to pick somebody on the spread here, I'm taking Houston, to be honest with you. Um, four points is enough for me at this point. When you look at some of the, the, the margins of victory and the way that, you know, the, the amount of points that Houston might be losing by at times when they're a dog is not quite by the spread. They're covering at a pretty good um, rate here, right? And in their last six, that's what I'm really concerned with because I think it is a bit of a, it, it's still the identity of their team. Uh, it, it, it's just been a lot stronger, right? So four and two to the under, um, but f- fifth and free throw attempt rate, like you said, uh, a lot of free throws against Phoenix. Um, they're third in percentage points off of free throws. Miami is fourth in limiting that this season. They've. Uh, what's really interesting is during the six game streak here, uh, where they're four and two, Houston's gone from shooting, um, you know, the seventh most field goal attempts from three to like the 21st most because they're they're limiting that. They're getting to the rim. They're attacking the paint as you see all these paint points uh, and free throws. And that's what, you know, that's obviously huge for them. Second chance points as well. So they're number six in in, uh, points in the paint, number two in second chance points. But we just know that that's exactly where you're not scoring on Miami's defense, right? Uh, As we've seen in their last few games, you're not scoring in the paint. You're not going to get those second chance points or offensive rebounds as they're limiting those. Um, And yeah, you're not going to get really good looks from three or or shoot a good percentage. But if you can, if you can sort of hit that mid range, hit a few floaters, you might be able to hang around. Not quite what you, you know, you're looking for from this Houston team at this point, if Miami is going to be guarding both the paint and the three point line to the effect that they are and the free throw line. That's huge. If they limit this, this Houston team to like 18 or less free throws, I just, I don't know how Houston is going to score enough um, to, to necessarily win this game, but it's both offenses that, that I don't trust at this point. Um, I love the splits of, you know, five and six of the over at home for Houston. And the fact that uh, Miami goes under so much on the road, as opposed to at home, right? They're 10 and five to the over at home, but five and nine to the over on the road. They're failing to cover that over by nine points uh, against that total there in all these road games as well for, for the Heat. And it's because their defense is better on the road and their offense is worse. It's just super simple. They score seven fewer points in the paint um, on the road than they do at home, which is huge for them as well. As we know, um, outside of you know their three-point shooters, guys like Jimmy uh, and, and Bam are looking to get uh, at, attack the rim. So um, you know for, for um, Miami in that same six-game span that I'm looking at for both these teams, dead last in offensive rating, dead last in points per game at a 102. Their games are averaging 207. Um, that D rating has actually gone down a bit from, you know, it's 108 or so to about 110. Um, they're not rebounding, which they haven't been doing all season, to be honest with you. It's kind of pitiful that they're so good on defense. And, and they're just, I guess it's because they're not getting any offensive rebounds. They really just shoot and go uh, and get back on defense so that they, they limit fast break points, um, but they don't crash the offensive rebound and, and really get those second chance points. So I, 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 I you know, I really like the idea of, of the way that Miami Miami's been playing as a favorite is awful. Five and fourteen uh, against the spread when they're a favorite in any capacity this season. Um, just not covering because they're not scoring enough uh, in any of those situations. And so in this one for for Houston, I, yeah, I, I don't know that I feel great about them winning. Uh, the spread numbers or the, the, against the spread numbers for them against the East with a rest advantage and all these situations is good. Um, they're definitely more likely to cover than not. It's just you know even at two a low two hundred nineteen total, I, I just still really feel good about this game going under with a Heat team that's not letting you get anything that the the Rockets are going to be trying to do on offense. And the Rockets have played a lot better on defense. Not that they'll need it if Miami's going to continue to be the worst offensive team in the league. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's not a low total if Miami's involved. Um, And they've gone under in three straight on back-to-backs here. Um, so there is definitely a, a situation where they where they they know they're tired. They're going to be walking it up more. The pace has been really slow in some of those. Uh, pace was fast against Minnesota, and they still went under because they struggled yeah. with office efficiency. 
Um, and they, I, but I do look at the Heat turning it around here. Um, I, I, I think they can win their next four games pretty easy, easily here. I mean, from here, they do go to Mexico City to face the Spurs again. Uh, so that's a weird blip there. But I, I think, you know, then they're back home and they get the Pacers again. And somehow they're in first place in this division, whatever whatever that means, at, at 14 and 15. Uh, but they have time to turn around and, and they're starting to. I mean, you hear some of the comments from Spolstra being like, we're, we're able to actually get into our actions now. They, were, they got hot from three against OKC to win that down the stretch. Um, and the comments from Jimmy is just like, you know, we need to find some consistency. Well, you could consistently get out on the court and make that happen. Uh, and <laughs> I think he might do that here at the tail end of this road trip. I mean, yeah, there's no question that they, they if they are truly motivated, they should be able to crush this team or at least, you know, limit them consistently. At, like we saw with Indy, you know, which was an explosive offensive team. I mean, what in their next game, they, they drop 122 on the on the road trip and Warriors um, and, and then they held to 82 the previous game. So Miami can totally shut down Houston if they really want to favoring the over. Um, I mean, the under and, and, and probably a heat win, in my opinion. Yeah, for sure. I mean, if the Heat, uh, if the Heat are going to keep Houston to under their total, which we like the matchup for the Heat defense for sure, um, then then you're talking about. I mean, right now the Heat team total is one eleven and a half, right? So if this game gets over, but you feel like the Miami Miami's defense is going to rule, you know, is just sort of going to rule this day, then you're what are you saying? Miami's going to get like 118 points to get us to this over? Like, get the hell out of here! <laughs> like, they can score averaging 102 a game. So the total in and of itself, um, there's I think you you leave yourself a lot of possible ways that this goes under. Like there's there's a lot more things that need to happen sort of outside the norm in this game for it to go over uh, than for them to get more than 219 points scored total. So cause, just because even if Miami does dominate this game, you're looking at probably like a 112 to 100 game. You're not looking at like a, you know, 119 to 105 game. Like I just, I just don't see them getting that many points. The pace will be too slow, et cetera. So um, yeah, limiting free throws, limiting points. That That's what we're looking at tonight. So with Milwaukee and Memphis playing, and as I'm explaining to Josh, I mean, both these teams are, they they dominate the margin in the paint, right? Um, they Memphis number one point, pain points, number three points pain points allowed this season, uh, and, and Milwaukee also dominant, of course, with Giannis there. They're starting to round back into form in terms of that. But when they play each other, they they can't stop each other. Um, they can't stop what the other one likes to do, which is get out in transition, score in the paint, uh, averaging 124 paint points between the two teams in their last two meetings, as well as 36 fast break points. And that's what they've been best at limiting lately. They're third and sixth in limiting fast break points. Obviously, I mentioned the paint point numbers. Uh, <clears throat> the last three meetings are two and one to the over. The exception was a 127-102 win for Memphis without John Moran. Um, so Milwaukee is is the concern here that they don't score on the road. Um, that there's definitely notable home road splits here that make you think like, oh, maybe they won't come along. I mean, even though the fact that they just dropped like 130 on the Warriors, who's but I, I mean, I'm leaning on pace here with the last seven meetings between these teams have averaged 104.6 possessions. So that's only 230 points per game. But when you play that fast, there's definitely the potential for a lot of scoring here. Drew Holiday is out. And while Milwaukee scores less without him as well, their defense obviously takes a hit too, up to a 113 defensive rating, allowing 114 points per game. Um, without Drew since last season and the six games without him this season, they are actually scoring a tick more playing at a slightly faster pace. Uh, so, I mean, he's his absence is obviously a big deal for John Morant, who's been quiet recently at home for Memphis, but is fully capable of exploding. And he went for 35 the last time they hosted the Bucks, and he was active uh, with Drew coming back from an injury. So Drew wasn't 100 percent there to, um, to to lock him up and. Uh, I mean, Memphis is taking off right now on a homestand, uh, 121 points per game, a 104 pace, shooting 53% from the floor and getting 67 pay points in their last three on this homestand. Also an elite defensive rating, but they've been playing, you know, the dregs of the Eastern Conference. And they so, I mean, I, I lean Memphis at home. They are 12 and two on the season. They are. They have only lost four home games since the middle of January last season. Uh, two were to the Celtics 
And I guess that's concerning because the, the Bucks and Celtics play a little similarly, but the Bucks are not traveling right now. Um, they just coming off that big win. There's a letdown spot here. They're missing Drew, who's easily their second most important player. Chris Middleton is not all the way back. And I don't think they're going to find things as easy um, against, you know, versus how they just cooked the Warriors, even though they were they, they were actually really inefficient in that one. Right. I mean, 22 assists, 21 turnovers, um, you know, but they Giannis only nine for 26 from the field. But it was a 105 pace. And that's why it did go over um, despite the inefficiency. So I, I think over plus Memphis, there's definitely a correlation there as well. That's plus 225. And um, there's something like 26 and one Memphis is their last 27 games when they scored 120. So definitely a correlation that if you want to get up and down with this team, they're going to beat you at it. Yeah, I mean, two two of the best in the league at doing that uh, between John and, and Giannis. I mean, it's it's a really interesting sort of split between players for the Bucks like with with they have one player that scores all his points in the paint his name is Giannis Antetokounmpo and then they have however many other guys in their rotation let's say seven guys that get in the game outside of Giannis who none of them get into score you know half their points in the paint um four of them score you know more than 50 percent of their points from deep uh i love the uh the the wesley matthews number that he shoots he shoots 70 or he scores 72 percent of his points from three point like west doesn't even stand inside the three-point line he's just there to three and d and to a degree yeah, the, the, the arrow that to a degree like that's that's the, gonna be every sort of one of their their let's say guys who gets time tonight uh, without Drew playing, right? Like I think Chris obviously is going to continue to get his minutes that have continued to ramp up, getting closer and closer to 30 uh, on his average. Um, and then, yeah, Pat Connaughton, Grayson Allen are going to be getting in there a ton more as well. And and we both know where they like to shoot from. Bobby Portis is getting some points in the paint, but Bobby Portis is scoring from everywhere as well. So, I mean, he continues to be super crucial for them um, and play about a few more minutes a game as well when Drew's not in there. So like him as well. But um, yeah, I, I think it's just about the matchup because Milwaukee has somewhat terrified me this season uh, to to pick, a, not necessarily against them, but to pick too many points being spo- scored in their games. It seems like a very hit or miss moment for them. It's just about the matchup because as, as we are you know looking at here, the, the home road splits for Milwaukee uh, in terms of scoring are just really stark, right? Like 13 more points a game at home versus on the road. It's that 105 that, that, that scares you. Now, Memphis has been scoring uh, on teams that, you know, when they play teams that aren't quite as fast paced as them um, and good at defense, a la the heat, then things start to to dwindle a little bit. Same concept for the 76ers uh, when they played them at, recently. Those are sort of the two best defensive teams they played in their last, you know, roughly five to ten. As you mentioned, just beating up on the dregs of the Eastern Conference, um, not including the Knicks, who are still are not in the dregs anymore um, and actually did beat, beat Memphis in that one. But um, still playing at a very fast pace with a team that, that you know, in the Knicks, it's, it has been playing a bit faster as well I bring all this up to say like Memphis is sort of trying to play fast no matter what it's just a matter of are they going to be able to get theirs in a, if the other team is slowing the game down too much um, so then you obviously look at how fast um, Milwaukee plays whether they're at home or on the road and you know not not too different necessarily but it, it is a little bit slower uh, than you would like to see for them I mean a 99 and a half pace isn't slow but it's a little bit slower than they play at home once again the reason for the points being scored there so I, I don't know if they're trying to necessarily slow it down down on the road. I don't think there's that big of a difference. And that's what you really need in this game to hit that over. Um, I, I would like the Bucks, though. I, I, if Drew was in this game, I would really like the Bucks uh, to, to, to win this one, you know, and take advantage of a Memphis team that, you know, hasn't really been playing competition that makes you worry about um, everything they've been doing. They're six and oh in their last six. Um, but yeah, like that, the best one that they had in there was a struggling heat team that I don't really feel uh, is playing anywhere near where it should be right now. I don't think anybody does. So um, I think the Bucks have played really good comp lately with Chris Middleton in even if he's just there um, to be a threat in a, in a way that you know th- when he's not on the floor Andrew's not on the floor you're really just like get Giannis out of there if Brooke wants to shoot 30 foot threes fine but like Giannis can't score Grayson Allen and Pat Connaughton and Wes Matthews 
and are going to have to beat us, right? And, and, and Javon Carter. So if, if that's the case still, like, that's faster. That's playing faster. Chris is in there to at least help them have that sort of, like, ball handling playmaker and, and slow things down when needed, especially with Drew not in there. Um, maybe get a few more assists. Their points per game are, like, five more since last season when Chris Middleton plays versus when he doesn't. So all those things lead you. Like, I, I feel better about Milwaukee, um, and, and I still don't mind an over if I'm taking Milwaukee because I do think Memphis is going to keep that pace going at home as they have been. Yeah, the home road thing just at this point in the season seems so stark, though, that like I just trust a team at home in to be geared up, you know, especially when they've been waiting for you and this is their fifth straight at home. And Memphis just, you know, they're 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 always that building's going to be jumping for an opportunity to be honest. But we're not necessarily trying to call a winner. We're just hoping for some some good points here. And I'm glad you brought up Middleton because, I mean, he hasn't been shooting at a high percentage, but the Bucks' offense has has kind of evolved in the half court since he got back, and yeah. especially the three point shooting, averaging thirteen threes at a thirty six percent clip, uh, up to thirty seven percent in in the last five that he started and finished. You know, throwing out that Rockets game where he got injured, they've gone over in seven of their last eight with Middleton out there um, and throughout the entire game. That's what I'm saying, and. Yeah, Milwaukee's pace has fluctuated wildly, uh, but if if they are able to hit threes, I mean, that's obviously the bellwether here. I, I would like to see where Bobby Portis props are at because he's going to see a lot of run here, um, and he's coming off a nice 21-point game, but with, with Memphis playing a big front line, they're going to need him. Uh, and then defensively, Memphis allows the highest assist-to-field goal ratio in the league, um, and, and Milwaukee's doing a much better job of sharing the ball on the road, at least uh, versus at home, they have very low assist ratio. So, I mean, that, that half court offense, it does give you some, some confidence in that, that they'll be able that maybe Middleton starts to get his groove a little bit more um, and helps you yeah. keep the scoring up here uh, along with guys like Grayson Allen, Bobby Portis mm-hmm. on the wing. And, and then Giannis has scored like a point per minute. His last three trips to Memphis is, is pretty much business as usual. So if it's close, I mean, he'll, he'll help you keep scoring as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Good luck stopping him coming down. He absolutely dominated the dubs. And and I like your point about the assist because the Bucks shoot a ton of those threes. And since Middleton's come back, um, they're, they're actually even increased their percentage of three point field goals that they're making that are assisted. Right. So they're swinging the ball around uh, around the perimeter a lot better with Middleton out there having just one more threat uh, to be able to put up that three or even just step in one dribble in a mid range. You've got to watch him a lot closer uh, than, than you would this offense otherwise. So, Nate, let's go ahead and jump into your first NBA play up prop for tonight yeah John Morant has been quiet in his last 10 home games but I don't think he's going to stay quiet in this matchup with the Bucks um you know a high profile matchup two teams that love to get up and down and attack the paint and Jaws thrives in this matchup uh his last time they hosted Milwaukee he went for 35 points on a on 25 field goal attempts three for 13 from three so it's at 27 and a half points. Uh, I do think you'll get over that kind of comfortably. I think maybe you want to look at an alternate for 30 plus or uh, 30 plus and a win if you are feeling Memphis at home here. But also like an interesting thing is just to take two threes for Ja because Milwaukee has dared him to shoot uh, for sure. I mean, in his last three against them, he's taken 11 threes on average, hit three and a half of those. Um, and so he's been quiet in that regard lately, but... If he starts feeling it, he will he will go in and um, Drew Holiday is going to be out here tonight. Uh, he he he's sick, and part of the reason Ja went for thirty five in that last matchup is because Drew was coming off an injury and only played twenty three minutes off the bench. Uh, Javon Carter's a nice um, pesky guard defensively. Wes Matthews will spend some time on Ja too, but I don't think you're really shutting him down, especially because the NBA doesn't really call carrying, uh, even though they're cracking down on travels and Ja just carry the ball and get by anybody he wants. uh, And that's why he'll get his 30 tonight. (laughs) Not fair. Not fair. He's not the only one, Uh, but it is egregious. You're not. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Either way, Ja Baby tonight, not a great matchup without Drew. We just saw Steph score 38 in 30 m- minutes before he had to come out. Um, well, that was that was against Indiana, but against uh, Milwaukee the other night as well. Steph was going off for a minute. Jordan Poole was as well. Bumped his knee. I just remember he came out last night. He came back in the game against Milwaukee, but um, I, I think there's reason to like uh, you know uh, point guards who can score their ability to get points when Drew Holiday's not playing. There's not a solid enough backup, I think, in that, in that uh, instance. So, um, 
a guy who might be on jaw a little bit, Grayson Allen, going to get a few more minutes at least tonight. So I think there's reason to feel better about him getting some stats tonight. Um, ten and a half points on FanDuel, uh, minus 113 on your money there. I think you could you throw the assists in. You get all the way up to plus money, 13 and a half points in assists. Depends how, how, how often, you know, how, how many minutes he's getting, but that is going up when Drew doesn't play. He's had double digits uh, totals in, in four straight now in his points. His usage does go up without Drew, unsurprisingly, from about 15 to 18 percent. He was definitely the guy uh, in their, their recent game without Drew um, that, you know, got got sort of a few more of those minutes as opposed to Javon Carter, who came out a little bit earlier than you might have thought. Uh, and, and Grayson saw a bunch more time there. Um, he also gets a bunch more usage on the road this season um, as opposed to at home where he's averaging 11 points a game uh, and three assists on the road because he's getting over 30 minutes as well. So if he's going to be getting the minutes, as I continue to expect him to do and get over 30 like he does when Drew Holiday does not play, um, it doesn't matter that he's not starting. He's often a better matchup in there uh, and a guy that you can count on to, to be able to score a few more points tonight. Former team theory too. Um, also you got to to yeah, you gotta love that 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 little extra juice. Saw Willie Barton go off in Denver last night. Um, but really, yeah, it's more about the Bucks just kind of finding their their ball movement with Chris Middleton out there. Giannis being able to kick it out more and 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 get the ball in rotation and get good shots. We mentioned that they've been shooting much better from three lately, and Memphis allows the fifth most threes. Uh, on the season. So they're going to need Allen and other guys to be ready to shoot that ball. Uh, only two games up because they're heat and clips on a back to back. So we don't have anything there, but I do love taking an under on Jordan Clark's. Uh, we, we have hit this a couple times this season because the guy can just go ice cold, um, but he could also just fail to give you any peripheral stats in, in his last five averaging two and a half rebounds and four assists uh, along with 19 and a half points per game. <laughs> and it's at 28 and a half PRA again against the Pelicans team that has some really good wing defenders and will be motivated after getting cooked uh, two nights ago. But it was Nikhil Alexander Walker and Malik Beasley that did the cooking uh, as Clarkson took a seat after scoring just 11 points in 29 minutes. The Jazz rode their bench to the win. The uh, Pelicans are really good. Like I said, I mean, Dyson Daniels, the rookie, uh, Trey Murphy, they've got a lot of guys they can throw at you. And then of course, Alvarado, uh, <laughs> and, uh, they're, they're allowing the seventh fewest points, six fewest rebounds to shooting guards, third in three point defense, second in free throws allowed eighth in efficiency allowed overall. So, I mean, Clarkson could, could still get you 24 points and, and go and go below this on PRA. But, uh, I think it's a good way to round it out or just take the under uh, on 21 points. I, I mean, I like adding the the peripherals in there, as we call it. I like adding the rebounds and assists for sure. I, I know it, it, worse, it to go under worse, worsens uh, your odds there, but I, I still would rather take that as, I mean, obviously, if, if he gets hot, that's when I just get mad as I'm watching, like when we've gone under, he hit a, he'll hit a couple of threes, and I'm like, oh, I don't get the spark going. But the rebounds and assists as well in there, like, I mean, they're – one of the worst rebounding teams. Uh, Zion's going to be in there gobbling up rebounds as I'm about to talk about. So I, I would really feel fine with, with, you know, them being able to limit everything else he does besides scoring at the very least. So um, speaking of Zion, Went over last time. It hit despite the fact that he played, what, 26, 25 minutes in that game. Uh, and he still hit his 34 and a half uh, or 35 and a half points and rebounds prop in that game that we called. Calling it again. It's only one more. Uh, and I just think that 25 minutes, the direct result of him not playing the second quarter because he picked up that third foul as soon as he came back in the game um, is the reason that, you know, he only had the 25 minutes. The game was over by the middle to end of the third quarter. Really, the end of the third quarter was completely done. Um, already down by like 18 points didn't really need to play much more after that so i mean i was happy that he got his prop right before he went out but 20 points in the paint in that game as well by the way and that's why we're picking zion um and i, and I love him against the yaz um because they don't guard the paint and they don't get rebounds and that's what zion does he crashed the boards um at an insane rate like i said the, the three fouls in the first half almost sunk us but didn't because 20 points in the paint in 25 minutes is will chamberlain stuff he had three offensive boards in that game and 14 second chance points so um obviously e either he or joval who joval actually 
actually had uh, six offensive rebounds in that one. Um, one of them to getting the boards, they're just going to be bit blank taps at the rim, essentially, which is what I was waiting for last time um, in, in the way that they do this. It's, since Zion came back, you know, they're, they're nine and two now after that loss to the Yaz last time. Um, but in those 11 games, like dudes averaging, you know, 27 points, eight and a half boards, four and a half assists. I don't hate if you want to throw the assists in there. It's 40 or uh, yeah, 40 and a half right now uh, on DraftKings. If you go over that, it does get you about minus 110. It's a little bit better odds. Um, FanDuel is probably the place to go for, for Zion points and rebounds tonight. If you're using that odds finder tool, you get better juice, uh, minus 113 on FanDuel there for him to get the 37 PR, the points and rebounds. It, like I said, it's just him playing taps at the rim tonight. If he gets 30 to 32 minutes, there's no way he doesn't get one more point or rebound than he got last time in 25 minutes. Yeah, I like sticking with it uh, because this this was basically the only way you're going to get a small Zion line is if they, they, the game gets away from him and they, he gets into foul trouble and he still put up a big line. Um, you just absolutely ridiculous efficiency. The the juice on some of these props are ridiculous. Minus 160 at DraftKings for him to have 28 points. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know where to find the value here. I guess you kind of have to lump everything together. Or I, I'll stick to my guns and say – Back him to get a double double with Utah struggling, uh, rebounding the ball so much. Uh, plus 225 for him to have a double double. If he is, like Josh saying, pl- playing taps, getting all those offensive rebounds and getting a full slate of minutes, uh, maybe he gets there and double digit rebounds. Yeah, dude, he had nine last time in 25 yeah. minutes. Uh, he just needs to be on the floor. So just don't foul Zion. Uh, move your feet or let him score. I don't care, but just get yours <laughs> by not fouling and staying in the game um, because it's too crucial to what they do as well. If they're going to dominate the the, the categories uh, of the game that they need to to beat the the Jazz, they need Zion in there as well. So that that's the identity of what they do. But that is all the time we have for you guys in this one. Go ahead and like and subscribe to that page. Continue to follow along. Also, check out our picks on Twitter that I'm throwing up there for you guys. So you can make sure to follow along with those, uh, tracking those units and wins for you as well. So until we see you next, happy betting. <laughs>